Good evening, everyone, and thank you for coming out in what could have been very iffy weather. Um, we want to thank the weather gods for holding off on whatever precipitation we're going to get tonight. Uh, driving back from Boston, I was going into rain and out of rain and into rain, so I wasn't sure what to expect, but came prepared with my rain hat. So I really appreciate that you did come out. It's windy, and it's potentially going to get quite messy a little bit later. But we appreciate your stalwart support every year, and thank you for coming out. And most importantly now, I want to introduce our mayor, John Mitchell, who has been a wonderful supporter of this work as well, and who also comes out every year at this time to help us to kick off Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Mayor Mitchell. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for coming out tonight. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the weather was touch and go, but I know all of you who, uh, who are out here tonight would, would come no matter what, because we're talking about something that's uh, very important to all of us. Um, you know, whether you have um, been a victim of domestic violence or, or not, it is uh, something that affects our community deeply. And uh, it's something that you know, every year when we have these ceremonies we, and reflect on uh, the need to address the, the problem, it is what strikes me more than anything else is that uh, it, it's, uh, it's really unfortunate that we're still talking about it in this day and age, but we are. Uh, culturally, we've moved on from a time when it was somehow uh, seen as acceptable to lay a hand uh, on, on your girlfriend or your partner. Um, it's no longer acceptable, and those days are long in the past. However, it still happens despite the stigma associated with it. And it happens, um, it happens in our community far too frequently. Uh, fortunately, we have uh, a network of folks that, uh, and organizations that put us in a position to deal with it. Uh, and you know, reminders like these uh, are, occasions like these are reminders of uh, the need to, to continue to be vigilant uh, but they're also a reminder of all the, the great work that is being done to save lives uh, and, and to put, get women, especially, and their families back on the right track. So uh, there are lots of folks to thank. Let me begin with, of course, the Women's Center for all the, the heroic work they do day in and day out, all year long, uh, in ways that uh, never hit or really hit the, the front page of the newspaper. Um, they, they are hard at it. They take on the tough days. They take them on 24-7. Uh, and they, they do it under very difficult circumstances. And so, Pamela, I just wanted to say, as always, thank you so much for all the work that you do and your leadership. Um, uh, year in and year out, you, you seem to come up to the microphone uh, and, and, and speak extemporaneously, very eloquently about this. And so I'm build, and maybe I'm building up with a little bit of drama your appearance I have here no tonight. Choice. I can't see the papers. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. But, um, and Rebecca as well. I mean, you guys, you guys really, um, you guys lead the way. And we in government uh, align behind you to provide the right uh, support, whether it's the district attorney's office and the DA's here, Tom Quinn. Uh, to speak, uh, the police department, uh, which is uh, represented tonight by Captain Joe Cadero, who uh, uh, will tell you, and I'm sure that, that he confronts uh, issues of domestic violence entirely too often uh, in our city. And New Bedford, of course, isn't unique, but it's the city council, Joe Lopes with Deb Coelho, uh, who deal with constituents who are facing uh, these issues. Um, it's all there, but uh, we're all working hard at it. Uh, to make, uh, to put women and families on the right track and to make our community a, a stronger place. So I really want to take the occasion to, um, I'm not going to try to squint and, uh, and read the proclamation that I have, so I will, uh, I will skip the, uh, uh, the reading, but I do want to say, uh, I do want to say this, um, you know, we have these occasions because the problem hasn't gone away, so we, let's all go forth and remind people that Domestic violence is still in, in the lives of way too many people, way too many family members, way too many friends, way too many community members uh, to um, uh, take our foot off the pedal. So let's keep at it uh, all year long so that we can have a stronger place and stronger families in our community. Thanks so much.
as usual, I have to lower the microphone after the mayor speaks. There's a height differential here that's pretty remarkable. And now I'd like to call to the microphone uh, a wonderful new district attorney who has been really a, a wonderful supporter of this work, of the work that the Children's Advocacy Center does, the work that is done all over our district to help victims of abuse and violence. And we're very glad that he could join us here tonight, District Attorney Tom Quinn. Thank you very much, Pamela. Um, I'm happy to be here tonight uh, to speak on uh, this very important issue. Uh, as the mayor indicated, it's an issue that uh, unfortunately has not gone away. It's an issue uh, that is uh, one of my priorities as a district attorney. We've established units to, to focus uh, with prosecutors and advocates to uh, more competently and efficiently handle these cases. I think the message has to go out through the efforts of the support groups and district attorney's office. Primarily men, but also women in this category, have to keep their hands off of women. It's a question of respect and manners. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't have. Uh, I've come across hundreds of thousands of cases. Uh, there are a number of individuals that have to be held accountable for their conduct. There's a great imp negative impact on families. When one, young children see what see uh, abuse going on, it doesn't take much to conclude that they're going to follow that path. Because if you're exposed to it, most likely you don't know any better, it's sad to say. Uh, we, uh, uh, as I said, this is a priority, working with the different agencies in our community. I want to do what I can to make a difference in this area, and as a male, not only the student is a male to stand up and say to men in particular, behave yourself and treat women appropriately. Not only is there prosecution, so there's some serious cases that we see, but I want to get out to the schools and talk to young people. That's where it starts. These relationships in high school that become turbulent and just escalate as time goes on into violent, dysfunctional relationships that do not do nothing but cause pain to family, friends, and ultimately children. Uh, so I'm happy here to kick off Domestic Violence Awareness Month, uh, and I look forward to trying to make a difference uh, in this area and thank all people, uh, the Women's Center and other groups, helping women who are hurt uh, as a result of domestic violence. Lastly, I just like to keep in mind all the people that have been killed sadly as a result of domestic violence uh, and who have been injured uh, uh, over the years. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> it's like really it's Joe Cadero. It looks like, well, yes, and it's um, interesting because I, I did want to mention that uh, Chief Preventure is a stalwart supporter of the Women's Center and is generally with us on these evenings. But he has sent instead a wonderfully appropriate delegate in the form of Captain Joe Cadero, who is also on the board of the Women's Center. And we're very grateful for him, his support on the board, his work, his volunteerism, and, and most importantly, very glad that he is where he is as a captain of the New Bedford Police uh, to help victims make sure that uh, prosecution happens and work with the district attorney's office to make sure that perpetrators are held accountable and work with us to make sure that victims get help. So, Joe. Thank you, Pamela. Uh, first of all, I just want to speak on behalf of uh, Chief Prevention, who could not be here today. He had a uh, scheduling conflict. Uh, I know he's dedicated to the issues and he's been very supportive to the police department uh, and outside of the police department within the community. And as far as I know, he's been to every one of these tree lighting events since he's been sworn in. So I want to thank him uh, for that and thank him for giving this opportunity to speak on the issue today. I'd like to thank Mayor Mitchell, who's been very supportive uh, towards the police department, but also as a board member 
He's been a friend and an ally to the Women's Center and the services that they provide on a daily basis. So thank you very much, Mayor. Uh, and also to our DA Quinn, who fights the fight every day with his people in the trenches in court to bring these cases to justice and give our victims some relief. Uh, so thank you, uh, DA Quinn. I would also like to take a special moment to thank my fellow brother and sister officers at the New Bedford Police Department who work hard day in and day out in the trenches responding to these calls for service in homes where people are suffering terribly uh, under the realm of domestic violence of power and control. They do an incredible job. I thank them as well as the civilians. Thank you. Our civilian advocates that work in the police department, Dot and Camille and their assistants in aiding and supporting and giving courage to our victims to go forward in a, in, in a time of need. And of course, uh, the staff at the Women's Center, who I apologize, I had to step out early today at our annual meeting. I wanted to be there when they introduced all of you because I know you work diligently every day, a difficult job from counselors to advocates to everybody that man, the receptionist, everybody just does a great job and I want to thank you. Uh, yes, thank you. And the chief asked me to speak a few words and I will say only a few words. I wrote them down here so I wouldn't forget too much and I'd keep it short because if I go off script I, I can be a little long-winded. So, um, domestic violence is one of the foremost elements that contributes to crime and plagues our society at the very thread of human spirit. We have all been touched either directly or indirectly by domestic violence. Despite many of our strides to reduce violence in the domestic realm, there are thousands of suffering victims and survivors making mends within themselves. I've been coming to this domestic violence tree lighting for the past 15 years. We have all seen many victories from legislative to social norm shifts, all significant and some with varying impact. The solutions requires commitment and responsibility from each one of us individually. Today's tree lighting represents a challenge that everyone accept responsibility to act and not be silent witnesses. If you see or hear domestic argument, whether your neighbors fighting or two strangers arguing on the street as you drive by, Please do not be silent and call the police. These victims are counting on your voice for help. Theirs is silent. Advocate, support those you suspect may be in an unhealthy relationship. I ask you, do not give up on them because they are not ready to take your offer for assistance. As Bob Riley once said, one person can make a difference. In fact, it's not only possible for one person to make a difference, it's essential that one person makes a difference. And believe it or not, that person is you. Secondly, we need to educate our children by example. Nelson Mandela said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. We must preach love, tolerance, show them, our children, that conflict within a healthy relationship can only be resolved through communication and respect for one another. Family members, extended family members and friends need to take on this responsibility of education and example. Violence must be removed from the equation and it is never part of a healthy solution. Finally, the entertainment media needs to accept responsibility and feed our youth positive examples of tolerance love and respect within our society via responsible broadcasting. Individually and collectively, we can and must make a difference. To all the victims who are still under the bondage of power and control, know that you have a community that is able and willing to assist you, as is evident here by all that is present in the agencies and the leadership of our community, willing and able to help. For the survivors, of domestic violence. I applaud you for your courage and I sympathize with your pain. Please know too that you have a community that is committed to you and your continued recovery. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much, Joe. And now I will call upon the councillors that are here, Councillor Deb Coelho, Councillor Joe Lopes, to see if the, you would like, like to say a few words. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, good evening, everyone. Ta uh, thank you for taking the time out of your lives to be here tonight because it is very important. Domestic violence happens all over the city of New Bedford throughout various neighborhoods, but unfortunately it happens more where um, we see a bit more poverty and broken up families. But I just want to mention, uh, a lot has been said here tonight, but I just want to mention uh, one thing. I was at the um, Gallery X right up the street on Sunday, and I was there for one reason, I, and I happened to run into some w women uh, that were there uh, reading out poetry they had written. And this poetry was the, that these women had been domestically abused by their own partner, boyfriend, a husband and um, I'll just never forget it because I, I came out of there totally heartbroken uh, because it was very intense it was very personal and um, I just could not believe that there was one thread through all of it they really thought it was their fault and I've come to find out that a lot of domestic uh, or should I say domestic women, but in, it includes uh, men as well. A lot of them, that a lot of the victims really think it's their fault. They really, really believe it, and that's why it continues. But I want to tell you tonight that it's not your fault. It has never been your fault. And uh, please make every effort to know that we know it's not your fault, and that we want to help you get out of whatever situation that you're in that there is going to be a better tomorrow for you. And um, I just want to leave you with that. Know that it'll, it'll never, ever be your fault. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Pamela, and the entire staff at the Women's Center for continuously bringing advocacy and supporting all of the victims of this traumatic yeah. event. Um, I will say I want to commend all the men for coming out this year. I've been coming for six years, and I think this is the most men that I've ever seen, so that's a, a strive in the positive direction. So I commend all the men and the women that are coming tonight. Um, and I'll speak extremely brief. I remember my worst phone call as a city councilor was a mother crying about her daughter who was in a domestic relationship where she was being abused. And it wasn't just physically, it was mentally. And the only thing that I knew that I could do was direct it to the Women's Center. And it was the hardest phone call that the, that mother had to make on behalf of her daughter and I continued to follow up with, with the mother, and the daughter was in a, an awful relationship for over a year and a half, and she finally had the courage and the conviction to move forward, but it was only because of the help of the Women's Center. This was a, a young girl in high school that was terrified that didn't know better. So I want to thank the Women's Center for they don't matter how young or how old the person is, they're always there to help and support, and it's only because that you have events like tonight that bring awareness and bring the community out. So thank you, and, and I will always be here as long as I'm a city councilor, and hopefully, um, when I'm not, I'll be in the audience as well to continue to support everything that you do on a yearly basis. Thank you. Thank you so much, both counselors. And now I'd, I'd like to ask to come forward Craig Norberg Bohm. He's the head of the Jane Doe, Inc. White Ribbon Campaign. And by the way, that's the men's campaign. So what Council Lope said is absolutely true. It's great to see men here tonight. It's great to see them stepping up. And we can't do this work without you. Thanks, Pamela. And we wouldn't be doing the work without you. <laughs> absolutely. No, the work of the Women's Center is essential and is groundbreaking and is, is why we're here to all together tonight. <clears throat> well, it's good to see everyone here tonight. I am uh, representing uh, Jane Doe, Inc., the State Coalition Against Sexual and Domestic Violence. We have 57 member programs, of which uh, the Women's Center is a stellar member, paving the way for, for work here in New Bedford, but we have centers in many other places in the state. And I want to tell you that we're thinking about the word prevention. So we've heard a lot about survivors tonight, and the voices of survivors tell us that we need to find a way to end this. So we have a creative problem ahead of us, which is what is the source of this problem? Going all the way upstream as the word goes, as the metaphor is, before you go into this water, what is the beginning of this? Well, the two, two communities of men I want to talk, speak to for a moment, one are parents, dads, and sports coaches who represent character for their male teens. How do you teach manhood? How do you teach the way to be and how to be? How do you teach connection? 
And I think we face a big question on how to do this, and I invite men to think about that question with us. Our campaign called the White Ribbon Day Campaign is geared to help men reimagine our manhood, to be men for change, to be contemplative about this question, and to be representing something different for their kids, something that involves peace and connection, safety and connection, and willingness to be well and connected, I'll use the word again, connection means a lot for boys. And I want us to think about how we do that. Now to connect, there's an event coming up I want to mention. October 22nd, it's going to be at a place called the, uh, how do you pronounce this, Solanche? Solanche Bar, or, or Irish Bar Pub, has, all, has opened their doors, made their space available for a men's gathering to talk about this and connect and talk about solutions together. So I hope to see all the men who are here to come to that event and and spend some time thinking about solutions together. Uh, our statewide campaign is called the White Ribbon Day Campaign. We invite individual men to join as representatives of the campaign, we call ambassadors, of which several of, several of those are here up with me tonight on the podium, so I appreciate you for that. Anyone else interested, I have information with me to tell you more about how to be an ambassador to our campaign. So thank you very, very much, and hope we see you later in the month. Thank you. Thank you so much, Craig. As I said, we can't do this work without men joining the work. We really need your help and support. And most importantly, we can't do this work without all of you here tonight. A couple people tonight mentioned the media responsibility and the fact that it's our responsibility. It is both. I spoke a few years ago about outrage. Where is the outrage around this? And I find myself getting outraged again and it's funny because I, I seem, I, one would think that I was past the age of outrage. I remember a, a, a famous protester uh, once being asked why he was no longer an angry young man. And he said, I'm still angry, I'm just tired. So I, I get tired sometimes of the struggle, and it is a struggle. You know, when we spend eight to ten months in America talking about whether a football was deflated by several degrees. When previous to that, we had actual video of somebody hitting a woman very strongly and then dragging her by the hair out of an elevator, another member of the NFL. And that was spoken about for maybe a couple of weeks. I don't think he got a four game suspension for that. We turned our attention away from it fairly quickly because it was much more interesting to talk about Tom Brady and the football. Well, women are not footballs, and I would think that the importance given to the football versus the woman who was dragged by the hair out of the elevator represents a fault in our society, a very big fault, and it outrages me, and it should outrage all of us, and it should prod us to action, because we're still here. The Women's Center, it's wonderful that we're here, but we're still here 43 years later talking about domestic violence and finding a way to prevent domestic violence. And you know, we are making strides. Last year, the legislature passed Chapter 260, which was an act that attempts to put an end to domestic violence through some legislation on the state end. And it's good. It's a beginning, anyway. We seem to have had fewer domestic violence deaths last year because the number I've seen is 13. However, when I drill down, I notice that that was simply from January. And usually, we take the numbers from October to October. So I'm still going to look at October, November, and December of last year and see what the annual numbers are before I get too hopeful that we've actually reduced domestic violence deaths. We seem to be getting more media attention around domestic violence, and that's good because talking about it is the beginning but I'd like to think we're at more than just the beginning. We began this journey 70, in 1973 at the Women's Center. I'd like to think we're further along the path. But it will take a societal sea change, which means we have to change the attitudes and the behaviors. We have to do primary prevention, as Craig was talking about. We do need to move upstream. The metaphor he was using has to do with the tendency that we have to pull the bodies out of the stream, down the end of the stream, without moving to the top of the stream to stop them from falling in to begin with. We have to stop these people from injuring the people that love them. 
We have to do something about domestic violence. We all have to do it. As Joe said, you call the police if you hear an argument. You don't need to get involved. We don't want you to get involved. We don't want you to be injured because people on the sidelines do get injured in domestic violence incidents. But we do want you to pick up that phone. You've got your cell phone with you. Call. Make sure that someone knows that there's something going on that's not right because someone who loves someone, is supposed to love someone, is hurting them. The fact that we still have people in relationships believing that by the very fact of that relationship they have the right to hurt someone is outrageous. And we need to feel the outrage and we need to work against this problem in our society that affects so many in our society. Jane Doe Inc. has just published a report that I invite you to read by going on the Jane Doe website. It is called Not One More, and it looks at all the domestic violence deaths in, within, since 2006 and talks about the effect of violence on children. One of my least favorite expressions when there's domestic violence in a home or a domestic violence homicide, and they go there and the children aren't actually dead, what they say is the children were unharmed. That's simply not true. They just saw their mother murdered. There's great harm in that, and it will harm them for a lifetime. So we have to find a way to prevent these deaths. We have to start at the core and change how we think about each other, how we exist in relationships with each other. Start by changing your children. Start by talking to the boys and the girls about how to be together, how to love one another without hurting each other. It's time to really feel the outrage and to stop domestic violence in our society. We're losing too many people to something that is preventable. This isn't cancer. I've said this before. It's not heart disease. It's not a big mystery. We know how to prevent this, and we do it all by putting our shoulders to the wheel and breaking the silence around domestic violence and standing up and deciding that not one more death to domestic violence should occur in our area. And we all need to pledge to that. Now, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Mayor Mitchell to light the purple tree. I'll just remind you again why the tree is purple. Uh, and that is because the color of Domestic Violence Month is purple. So we invite you to wear a purple pin. That's the least thing that you can do, is take a pin tonight, wear it, and, and talk about it. Tell people, look at my purple pin, and this is why I'm wearing it because people are dying every day because of domestic violence and we have to stop it. So that's why purple. I will say that the purple lights may have been an idea that was a great idea on the, on the drawing board, but they don't tend to show up very well. So look for the lights and uh, maybe next year we'll add some bright white lights and, and, and make it shine a bit more. But we wanted it to be unique to this time because we don't want people that, to think that we're just crazy and we're putting Christmas lights up too early. It really has to do with remembering the victims of violence, not just those we've lost, the ones that are still living every day in fear and being injured, and also the ones we will most certainly lose next year. Because believe it or not, we will have deaths next year to domestic violence no matter how hard we work but we still need to keep working. And I thank you all for being here tonight because that's part of doing this work. May Mitchell. Let's, let's hear it for Pamela. Let's hear it for Pamela. Really well said. Why don't we do it on three? All right, ready? All together. One, two, three. There you go. Thank you everyone for coming out tonight.